Hey guys, let's take a look at two things. A little bit of geometry today, but first let's see, we're gonna figure out substitution. Um, when you have an equation like this, and it says, I don't know, let's say x plus y equals 10. Forget this right now, let's look at this. Is there any way to solve this equation? I mean, no, not really. I mean, you could have five and five, six and four, negative 86 and 96. I mean, there's no way to say that definitively, this is the answer. Okay, because you have one equation with two unknowns, impossible to solve. But if you have two equations and they both have two unknowns, then yeah, you can do that. In other words, you've got to figure out an X and a Y that will work for both of those equations. And there will only be one set of X's and Y's that work for that equation. So using the substitution to solve means they give you two equations and you take one of these numbers or, or variables and you will uh, substitute it in for another on, on the other equation. In other words, you can, you can only solve equations if you just have one equation. Forget this. If you just have one equation, you can only solve it if you have one variable. Because you clock together all the like terms, then you figure out what they are, and then you go, oh, okay, x is equal to 12 or whatever. Okay, that's what you're aiming for. Using substitution means you will take an equation and go, okay, let's look at this first equation. X is the same thing as Y plus 5. Well, if X is the same thing as Y plus 5, then you can take this and go, well, I can put, instead of putting an X in this equation, since X is the same thing as Y plus 5, I'll put Y plus 5 right here in the second equation. So you're going to write that second equation not with 3X, but 3 times Y plus 5, because X is the same thing as Y plus 5. Then you'll keep going. Plus 2y is equal to 5. That good? Okay. This is a soluble equation because you just have y's in it. You can get that. Okay, so we got 3y plus 3 times 5 plus 2y equals 5. All right? So I got 3y plus 2y is 5y. And I move this over here. 5 minus 15 is negative 10. And then y is the same thing as negative 2. So y is equal to negative 2. If y is the same thing as negative 2, then you can just go back on one of the equations and go, okay, solve for x. x is equal to y plus 5. Well, I'm not going to write a y anymore. I'm going to write a negative 2. x is equal to negative 2 plus 5. Well, then x is equal to 3. And the funny thing is, is that this negative 2 and 3 will work in both equations. In other words, let's look at the first one. x, 3. Is 3 equal to negative 2? y is negative 2 plus 5. Of course, it does work. But let's look at the second one now. 3 times x, if x is 3, well, that'll be 9. Plus 2 times y, well, 2 times y, if is y is negative 2, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Is 9 and a negative 4 equal to 5? Yep, sure is. There you go. Got it. Now, these get a little more interesting. And the only thing different about this equation and the one we just did is that they're going to make you mash everything else over onto the other side except for one of the variables. So in other words, this was ready made for you. The x is equal to y plus 5, you just plopped it in the second one. This one here, they're going to force you to solve for y. It looks like y is the easiest thing to piddle with at this point. There's only one y, but it's negative. So we're going to take that first equation, 3x minus y is equal to 11, just copy it down again. I'm going to move this over and it turns into negative y is equal to 11 minus 3x, correct? Okay. We don't care about no negative y. We want a positive y, okay? Well, if we divide everything by a negative 1, which is what we want to do to get a positive y, this is our brand spanking new equation. y is equal to 11 divided by negative 1 is negative 11. Negative 3x divided by negative 1 is positive 3x, okay? So this is our nice new equation we're going to use to plop into that second equation and rewrite it to make it so we can solve it, okay? So, we do not have 2x plus 3y anymore. Instead, we have 2x plus 3 times, we said y is this. So we're gonna stick it in there. Negative 11 plus 3x, and that's gonna be equal to negative 11, okay? So I'm just gonna copy it down again, 2x and then positive 3 times negative 11 is negative 33. Positive 3 times positive 3x is 9x. That equals negative 11. Okay, so I got 2x. 
I got 9x, I got 11x, okay? This goes over, and that turns into positive 33. Negative 11 plus 33 is 22, and then x is equal to 2. There we go. Now, let's go to the second part. You can use either one of these equations if you want to, or look at this. You can go y is equal to this, you know, blah, blah, blah. So just stick in what you got for x in here. And, but again, you can use any of these if you want to. Any, any of these equations you want, stick in what you get for x and then see what you get for y. Let's use this, this seems easier. So I'm just gonna rewrite this. y, y equals, equals, negative 11, negative 11, plus three times x. Well, three times x is three times two, that's six. So negative 11 plus six is negative five. Yoink, there we go, that's it. We just use substitution. Either do it really nice and easy like that, or if they give you some you know, horrific looking thing like this, just go ahead and move everything over and get, you know, solve for one of the variables. And uh, at this point, they're gonna give you one that you, know, you can divide by a negative one or a one and they have a nice one X or one Y or whatever. So there you go. Okay, this, uh, try this one. Same kind of thing here. You can copy or pause and copy if you need to. Um, well, I don't know, what do you think? I think the top equation is gonna be really easy to use to substitute. The thing is, should you use X or should you use Y? In other words, should you move over the Y to the, this side and go X is equal to 20 minus Y? Or should you move over the X and go Y is equal to 20 minus X? And the answer is, it doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter, whichever one you like. Okay, so I'm just gonna move the x over. So I have a new equation. y is equal to 20 minus x. That's my new equation. Well, let's just slot that right into here then. All right, so I got 5x, 5x, plus 10y. I'm just gonna put plus 10 times y. Well, y we said is this, 20 minus x equals 150. So 5x, 5x, 10 times 20 is 200. Uh, 10 times negative x is negative 10x, and that equals 150. So let's see here, 5x minus 10x is negative 5x. If I move this over to this side, 150 minus 200 is minus 50. So negative five times what gives you negative 50? Well, the answer is 10, x is equal to 10. And let's go to one of these. You can go that equation. You can go that equation. You can go this equation. You can go way back here, 10 pages to the next equation. No, you can't do that. Okay, don't try that. All right. You can use anything you want. I mean, if x is 10, y is going to be 20 minus 10, and y is going to be 10. Same old thing. Or x, 10 plus y is 20. Of course, y is 10 as well. And there you go. All right. Let's look at uh, some geometry very quickly. And what they're going to do is give you an isosceles triangle. And they're going to say, find the area of the isosceles triangle. Well, um, you tell me, what is the formula to find an area of a triangle? It's the area of the base times the height, correct? Okay, so we don't have the height of this triangle. Don't, don't think that 5 is the height of the triangle. It isn't the height. This is the height of the triangle. From here to here is the height of the triangle. We don't have, the five is not anything close to that. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is, since we drop this perpendicular little vertical here, uh, we're gonna have to figure out what this is here. Once we drop that like this, this chops that four into two chunks, into two equal triangles, congruent triangles. So this length of this side here, let's say they're right triangles, that'll be a two. And then, in other words, this is what your new you know, triangles look like. Well, okay, that's my five, and that's gonna be my two. We do not know the height. That's what we want to know. We have the base, we need the height. Well, we can use a certain theorem devised by Pythagoras to help us find that. Does anybody know what the name of that theorem is? That's correct, the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's just think, use that Pythagorean theorem to help us figure out what that side is. And of course, you can call this A or B, it doesn't matter, I'll just call it B, whatever. So I got two squared plus, let's just call it H for height, height squared equals five squared. So that's gonna be four <clears throat> plus the height squared equals five squared. So the height squared is gonna be 25 minus four, 21. That doesn't give you a nice even in integers and answer. 
So the answer is just the square root of 21, and that's going to be the height. Okay? So, uh, remember the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. Well, the base is four, so half of four would be just be two, and then the height is just the square root of 21. And you don't need to do anything else other than just, you know, plop them both together, and you're done, and you got it. And that's the area of the triangle. You just drop the vertical, find out what the height is, and then use your formula. And there you go. Okay. All right. We got a couple of problems here. Uh, go ahead and pause it and try A. All right. Well, and this is a pretty simple one. If X is the same thing as Y plus 7, then you just put a Y plus 7 right there. So that's going to be 2 times Y plus 7 plus 3Y equals 4. So 2 times Y, 2 times 7, and here we go. 2y and 3y give you 5y. Moving this over here, 4 minus 14 is negative 10. And then y is going to be negative 2. There you go. That's part of it. Let's just go ahead and pull off this right into here then. So x is the same thing as negative 2 plus 5, which is, excuse me, plus 7, which is 5. There we go. Piece of cake. All right. Let's find the area of that triangle. Go ahead and pause that and try it yourself. Okay, we'll drop that vertical down there like that, and we get a nice right triangle. We don't know the height, what is called h, but we do know the length of this side of the triangle is going to be 2. So let's just use our Pythagorean theorem. So we have 2 squared plus the height squared is equal to 3 squared. That'll be 4 plus the height squared is equal to 9. So the height squared is equal to 9 minus 4. And then, of course, the height will just be the square root of 5. Okay, and don't forget the area of a triangle is 1 half times the base times the height. Well, a half of the base, you know, half of 4 is just going to be 2. Then the height is the square root of 5. So, it's all she wrote. It's 2 times the square root of 5. Okay, all right, that's it for today. See you guys next time. Take care.